So today's the day that General Motors electric vehicles get access to the Tesla supercharger network. Well, at least the V3 and later Tesla superchargers. The V2 superchargers won't work with electric vehicles from other manufacturers. I already put out a video on how to use the Tesla superchargers if you have a General Motors electric vehicle, but I wanted to do one specifically on how to charge the Bolt EV on a Tesla supercharger, which is what we're gonna do here today. And I need to make a note of something that I said in my original video on how to charge GM EVs. I said in the video that Bolt EVs would require an update, a software update from their dealership before they could use the Tesla supercharge network because that's what GM told me actually on multiple occasions uh, as we were prepping for this launch. General Motors worked with me exclusively uh, on producing a uh, a pre-launch video. They gave me access to the supercharger network and I used my Chevy Equinox EV to charge on it and make that video and I'm very thankful to GM for allowing me to do that. However, they did give me some incorrect information. Uh, they said that all bolts would require a software update. I found out shortly after the launch when I contacted my contacts at GM that that information was incorrect and all bolts don't require the software update. Actually, very few of them do. So after being initially told that all bolts would need some sort of a software update to be compatible, I reached back out to General Motors and they said, no, we were incorrect with that. It's only 2019 and some 2020 bolt EVs. Uh, and the dealers will know based on the VIN if the vehicle needs a software update. But now I'm being told by some of my followers that they have a 2019 or a 2020 and they're calling their dealer and the dealers say, no, you don't need to come in. There's no software update needed. And then they've tried the vehicle out on superchargers with an adapter and it's worked just fine. So I think where we're at right now with bolts and whether or not they need a software update is don't get a software update try it out, get your adapter, try it out on superchargers, and if everything works, you're good. But if there's some sort of error codes or issues, uh, then you go get the software update. So I wouldn't recommend you just heading out on a road trip with an adapter without testing it first. First, test it out to make sure you don't have any type of compatibility problem. Because at this point, I, I think it's only like a very small percentage of 2019 and 2020 Bolt EVs and EUVs that are gonna need some sort of a software update in order to make sure there's no compatibility issues. Okay, with that said, so my Bolt is ready to charge at this Tesla supercharger. And in order to initiate charging, what you have to do is go to your app from the home screen, click on the little map feature, and it should show that you are at or very close to a Tesla supercharger, tap that icon for the supercharger, and then you'll come up on the map and you'll say charge here. After you hit charge here, you're going to have to select which station you're at because the Tesla supercharger stations all are numbered. As you can see where I'm here, I'm at station 2C. So I have to select 2C and hit start charging. When that happens, you're going to wait about 20, 30 seconds and your vehicle will be charging on that supercharger. State of Charge is powered by QMerit. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charging equipment you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and let the EV charging installation professionals at QMerit install it. Okay, so now that I'm here, I wanted to do a couple things. First of all, I wanted to test that all the adapters work on my Bolt. So I tested the A to Z Typhoon Pro adapter first, and it was pulling the full 50, actually a little bit higher kilowatts that the Bolt can pull. I just let it charge for a minute or so because I just wanted to make sure compatibility was fine. And then I tested the Electron Vortex adapter, and it worked just fine. And again, it was pulling slightly more than 50 kilowatts. That's the maximum that the Bolt will accept from any DC fast charger. And next up, I'm gonna do a full 20 to 80 recording to see how the Bolt charges over that period using the official Tesla adapter. I'm not gonna do any thermal testing with any of the adapters here like I've done on some of my other 
uh, adapter tests because the Bolt only pulls 50 kilowatts. And I charged my Lightning and my Rivian at 165 kilowatts and 210 kilowatts. And even at those much higher speeds, there were no thermal problems on the adapter. They were still well within the safe limit. So 50 kilowatts that the Bolt's gonna pull is you know, gonna be a breeze for any of the adapters. Thermal problems will not happen when you're charging the Bolt, regardless of what adapter you use, as long as it's a relatively well-engineered adapter and the A to Z, Electron, and of course the Tesla adapters, all are very well engineered adapters so you wouldn't have any problem with that they'll all work just fine okay so next i'm going to plug in now and do a 20 to 80 percent recording we'll see how long it takes on a tesla supercharger to add that 60 percent to the bolt evs battery pack so as soon as i plugged in it jumped up to 53 kilowatt which is what i expected and what i see when i charge on other dc fast chargers it pretty much held that the whole time until about 55 percent state of charge except there was a little blip at around 10 minutes when it dropped under 50 kilowatts just for two minutes but then it went back up to 53 but at 55 percent state of charge it starts to gradually lower its charge rate this is a normal charging curve for what i've seen with my bolt ev down to when i hit 80 percent it was out only charging at 26 kilowatt now that happened after 49 minutes of charging but if you're looking at the clock you have to understand i had a little bit of a blip the car shut off at 78 percent state of charge I don't know why, but it did. So I had to plug it back in, and then it took three more minutes to finish charging from 78 to 80%. But it actually wasn't charging for six minutes. So from 426 to 432, you don't notice on this because I edited it out. The car was just sitting there. But the total time to charge from 20% to 80% took 49 minutes, which is representative of what I see when I charge on other DC fast chargers. And I even plotted out the charging curve. As you can see here, as soon as I plugged in at 20%, went up to 53 kilowatts. It was holding that until around 30%. And it had this dip down here, down to uh, 49 kilowatt. I mean, not much. It's only uh, 3 or 4 kilowatt, but it looks like a lot on this chart because the bolt doesn't pull a lot. And it held the lower rate for a couple of minutes. Then it got back up over 50 kilowatt and held that till right around 55% state of charge. And at that point, it dropped under 50 kilowatt and had this nice slow linear drop off down to 80%. This is not any different than what you would see if you plugged into a Electrify America or EVgo or other DC fast charger. The supercharger is going to do pretty much the same as what you're going to get on any other uh, DC fast charger that can deliver over 50 kilowatts. Okay, so the 20 to 80% charging session is basically the same as what I see when I'm charging on an EVgo or Electrify America DC fast charger. Took just about the same amount of time. So you're not gonna charge any faster or slower if you use Tesla superchargers, but now you have those as an option. And on a road trip, having the ability to plug into Tesla superchargers is an incredible advantage. Now, remember I mentioned this earlier, you can't use all Tesla superchargers. So you need to make sure that the ones along your route that you're gonna use are V3 Tesla superchargers. You could do that uh, by the power level that they put out. The V3 superchargers are listed to put out up to 250 kilowatts. The V2s say 150 kilowatts. And you could check in apps like Chargeway and PlugShare to see which ones put out the 250 kilowatts. And those are the ones that you want to hit up. And actually, not all of them work. There's no way to really filter out which ones work or not yet. Uh, I've noticed in my uh, Bolt, I navigated here through Google Maps and it was telling me you can't use that charging station. So GM doesn't have that worked out yet with Google Maps with the navigation because it was telling me, don't go there, you can't charge, but I can. Rivian and Ford have that kind of ironed out already with their vehicles and the in-car navigation that uh, routes you to charging stations has the Tesla superchargers that you can use built into it already so it doesn't steer you to the wrong place. I don't have that set up here with uh, the Bolt and I use Android Auto. It was telling me I can't charge here. Uh, another thing I wanna mention is, as you can see, I'm charging to the right of this Tesla supercharger because the charge port on my Bolt EV is on the front um, left side quarter panel. Tesla superchargers are set up 
for Tesla vehicles and their charge port is on the rear left side of the vehicle. So I'm actually charging in the stall that was meant for the supercharger next to me. So you wanna to try to be cognizant of that. There's nothing I can do about it. I have to charge on, on the stall to the right of the supercharger. So I'm actually using two stalls in order to charge one vehicle. So there's one stall that can't be accessed right now, which isn't ideal. Uh, if you can, see if you can park to the rightmost charger in the Tesla supercharger site and then pull to the right of that charger. And that way you're only going to be using that one stall for that one charger. You can't always do that. Here at this um, station, Alamuki, New Jersey, there's always empty stalls. So I moved to the middle of here because it was a better place to record and there's nobody else here. So I'm not blocking anybody's stall, but be cognizant of that when you're uh, using Tesla superchargers. There's nothing you can do until we get some sort of a longer cable. The Tesla V4 superchargers have longer cables. And there's also extension cables that are being engineered now. They're supposed to be available soon within the next couple of months. And you could purchase one of those and then you can park in the proper stall and charge at that Tesla supercharger. Um, well, that's pretty much all I have here today for my first time charging a bolt on a Tesla supercharger. Uh, if you have any questions about how to link your vehicle to the supercharger so you could have access, I go through all of that in the video I put out this morning on how to charge your GM EV on a Tesla supercharger. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video here today in case you need to know how to pair your app with your vehicle. You have to do that first. You have to make sure you're on the latest version of your My Chevrolet app. Uh, and then you have to add a payment method if you haven't done that already in your app. So there's some steps you have to do. You can't just show up with your uh, adapter and plug in. You have to link your vehicle to, your, with, to the superchargers with a payment method before you can even do this. Well, that's all I have here today. If this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.